she is a rural orphan raised by her grandmother. He is the richest man in China with a net worth of billions. She is delicate and delicate, and people can bully her when they see her. He is naturally domineering and everyone fears him. Two people who are completely out of line are involved in an accident. The identity of separation between clouds and mud, Shen Yihuan's cautious survival, and Lu Jui's reckless pursuit of future partners. Everyone feels that it is impossible for Lu Yunzhou to fall in love, get married, and have children like ordinary people in this lifetime. Until one day, a video exploded on internet headlines and stunned everyone. In the video, Lu Yunzhou was seen holding a little woman in his arms and softly coaxing, Baby, your best friend's daughter is so cute. Shall we also have a baby? Chapter 1 Kidnapping You are listening at NovelFull.audio Hurry up, if someone runs away, we'll all be ruined. As soon as the rough sound outside the door fell, Shen Yihuan was suddenly startled by the figure in front of her. Ah. Um. Shut up, if you speak up again, I'll kill you. Before the scream could be heard, a big hand covered the mouth. A strong smell of blood rushed in, and Shen Yihuan suddenly felt a pang of nausea. Subconsciously using both hands to push the man in front of him, but due to the significant difference in strength between men and women, he did not push the other person at all. The strong smell of blood on the man's body made her fear even more intense. The petite body trembled uncontrollably, and the man lowered his head to look at the woman in front of him. Looking at the petite figure trembling with fear, his small face was filled with panic, and his widened apricot eyes stared at him for a moment. Lu Yunzhou's pitch black eyes showed a hint of abnormality. The man lowered his head when he heard the footsteps coming and going. The warm lips, with a predatory aura, blocked her mouth and drove straight in, constantly encroaching on every inch of sweet land. The man kissed eagerly, even rudely, with a hint of greenness. Shen Yihuan was forced to bear it, and her small face gradually turned pale from red. Tears welled up from the corners of the eyes. As the sobbing sounded, the man tasted the salty and astringent taste. The bent waist stiffened slightly and when I lifted my head, I saw a delicate little face covered in tears. A moment of confusion flashed in the man's eyes, and his fingers unconsciously tightened. As he heard the footsteps gradually fade away, he quickly let go of her. The scene remained motionless for a few seconds before he took off the pendant from his neck and put it into Shen Huan's hand. You keep this thing, and tonight I will have someone contact you to give you the corresponding compensation. Without waiting for Shen Yihuan to respond, he prepared to leave. Shen Yihuan caught a glimpse of the bright red bloodstains on the ground, and before her brain could make a decision, her body had already begun to move. The slender little hand grabbed a little sleeve of the man's shirt and timidly said, You. You're injured. The man glanced at her sideways, his sharp eyes revealing a depth that Shen Yihuan couldn't understand. The two eyes collided and Shen Yihuan quickly withdrew his hand and explained, if you go out like this and encounter them again, they will definitely catch you. You. You, I'll go get you medicine, you wait here. Three days later, Jui, brothers have asked the nearby villagers, and they said that this house was set on fire last night. No one knows exactly how it went wrong. The villagers discovered that the house had already burned halfway when the fire alarm was triggered. However, although the fire was fierce at the time, the police arrived and did not find any casualties in this house. On the night before the fire, the villagers had seen the owner of this house, but no one has seen this person since the fire. It's like the owner of this house disappeared overnight, not even the police found a trace after listening to his subordinate's words, the man sitting in the car slowly opened his eyes and looked not far away with eagle-like eyes. The wooden house that was still alive three days ago in my memory is now almost reduced to ashes, and a hint of bloodthirsty killing intent flashed in my cold and sharp eyes. There was a silence in the air, and after a long time, the man lifted his thin lips and said, since he wants to die, let's make it happen to him. Upon hearing this, Song Zhao was taken aback and said, Ninth Lord. As Song Zhao Gang spoke, 
Lu Yunzhou's sharp eyes swept over as if with a knife, do as I say. Dot. Song Zhao said, yes. It has to be said that Song Zhao, as the number one assassin who once made enemies afraid, did have two abilities. Lu Yunzhou ordered that in less than five hours, the person who the police had not yet found was found by him. In the basement of an abandoned factory on the outskirts of Kyoto, a petite figure collapsed on the ground in a corner, covered in bloodstains. The crimson blood stained the white dress. At the moment Lu Yunzhou saw it, his heart tightened in an instant. The hand hanging on his side suddenly snatched the wooden compartment from Song Zhao's hand. Before anyone could react, a bullet had already broken through its shell and entered the human body. Seeking death. The man's cold and sharp voice, sinister eyes, and bloodthirsty methods made the shot man feel fearful for the first time. Ignoring the injury on her leg, she quickly pulled Shani Huan up in front of her, holding her neck with one hand and pressing her head against the wooden warehouse with the other. Lu Yunzhou, give it a try again. Today, I want to see if your movements are fast or my bullets are fast. The man's eyes were intertwined with anger and hatred, as well as a strong sense of unwillingness. Lu Yunzhou stopped and his gaze fell on Shani Huan's face. He could tell at a glance that something was wrong with her. When he looked at the man behind her again, a murderous intent flashed in his eyes. What do you want? Ten billion yuan, if someone prepares a car for me and asks me to leave, I will naturally let her go. Shi Lu Yunzhou sneered disdainfully, do you think I will show mercy to you again? Let you have another chance to stab me in the back. Upon hearing this, Lu Yunjing felt anxious in his hand, which was holding Shani Huan's neck, tightened even tighter. In an instant, Shani Huan's already pale face turned colorless due to breathing difficulties. Lu Yunzhou, you forced me to do everything. Don't think I don't know about your relationship with this woman. If she is someone of great importance in your heart, how could you possibly give that thing to her? I'm telling you, if you don't let me leave today, I... I'll die with her at best. You have caused my wife and children to be separated, and I want you to taste the feeling of having nothing Lu Yunzhou's gaze fell on Shani Huan's pale face, his eyes narrowed slightly, knowing that he could no longer provoke Lu Yunjing. Okay, I promise you. Upon hearing this, Lu Yunjing's eyes lit up. Lu Yunzhou gave Song Zhao a glance, and Song Zhao nodded and quietly retreated before he took out his phone to make a call. Lu Yunjing's attention was focused on Lu Yunzhou, without noticing any other abnormalities. As time passed, Lu Yunjing saw Lu Yunzhou's expression becoming more relaxed. The car he had requested had not yet moved, and he began to feel an ominous feeling in his heart. Lu Yunzhou, why hasn't the person you arranged moved for so long? Are you procrastinating? Are you playing with me? Lu Yunzhou calmly took out a cigarette and took it into his mouth, casually looking at him with a wild smile on the corner of his mouth. Lu Yunjing let out a thud in his heart. In the moment when his hand trembled, he didn't even see how Lu Yunzhou acted. There was a hole in the wrist of his gun holding hand. Blood rushed out recklessly, and the pain instantly spread to all four limbs. The gun fell to the ground, and before he could react, he kicked the girl in the abdomen again. The girl who had been under his control was pulled away from his embrace with a force. When he regained his composure and lifted his head again, Shani Huan was already carefully held in Lu Yunzhou's arms. Lu Yunzhou lowered his gaze and glanced at the girl in his arms. Without even giving him a glance, he hugged Shani Huan and left. Lu Yunjing knew he had been defeated and his eyes were filled with resentment as he could only watch them leave. Song Zhao gave a glance to his subordinates behind him and quickly followed him out. Chapter 2 He is a dangerous person. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Lord Lu, give me the person. You still have injuries on your body. With such force, the wound will definitely crack again. Lu Yunzhou didn't speak, but his actions have already been responded to. Song Zhao looked at his slightly swaying figure, feeling both worried and anxious in his heart. 
but he can only watch helplessly, because he knows Lu Yunzhou better than anyone else. When Lu Yunzhou ordered him not to show mercy to Lu Yunjing anymore, he knew that the significance of Shen Huan in Lu Yunzhou was not just about saving his life. As the eldest young master of the Lu family, Lu Yunjing should have inherited the heavy responsibility of the Lu group from him. But after Lu Yunzhou was born, this young master became the most favored one in the Lu family. Therefore, invisibly, it has become a threat to Lu Yunjing. He threatened the position of Lu Yunjing. Since the first day when Lu Yunzhou entered the Lu group to attend all meetings at the age of 16, the two had already begun to engage in open and covert struggles. What Lu Yunjing has done for so many years has caused more serious harm to Lu Yunzhou than this time, but Lu Yunzhou has endured it. The reason why he can't bear it this time is simply because Lu Yunjing moved the girl Lu Yunzhou is currently holding in his arms. Shani Huan opened her eyes, and it was pitch black in front of her. Her heart thumped, and fear instantly filled her heart. Just as she was about to sit up, she felt pain all over her limbs as soon as she moved. I couldn't help but take a breath of cold air. Hiss, you're safe now, it's okay. You're injured, lie down and don't move. The male voice ringing in my ear is somewhat familiar, magnetic and powerful. Shani Huan didn't have time to think carefully, and a dazzling flame flashed through her mind. She quickly asked. Who are you? Where am I? My name is Lu Yunzhou, and you are currently in the hospital. Song Zhao listened on the side with a smacking tongue. In his impression, Lu Yunzhou had never spoken so softly to anyone. Shani Huan's furrowed brows had not relaxed since waking up, and now she pursed her lips. I remember we didn't seem to know each other. How did I get to the hospital? Did you save me? Well, I'm sorry for getting you involved because of me. You're recovering well, and I'll be satisfied with any compensation you want when you're better. Lu Yunzhou's words surprised Shen Yi's heart. The hand under the blanket unconsciously grasped the corner of the blanket. The scene of that night flashed through my mind, and my face turned even paler. In fact, when she was inexplicably taken away, she had already guessed that it was probably related to the man she saved that night. She just didn't expect that the person who saved her was actually the same man. Thinking that this man had just appeared in her life, causing herself a reckless disaster and even causing her home to be burned, Shani Huan's face turned cold. When he spoke again, his tone became a bit cold. I have no acquaintance with Mr. Liu, and that night was not my intention to save you. It was you who secretly hid in my house. As for cleaning your wound later, I was completely worried that you might have an accident and cause trouble for me after leaving my house, that's why I did that. If I had known that saving you would have caused such harm to myself and my family, even if you had died at my doorstep, I would have turned a blind eye. So Mr. Lu doesn't have to worry about it. As for the compensation you mentioned, I won't take it either. Please don't appear in front of me again from now on so as not to bring trouble and disaster to my life again Song Zhao took a deep breath and silently sweated for Shini Huan. Such a gentle person, yet spitting out such a lukewarm words in their mouth. He quietly glanced at Lu Yunzhou's face and saw no displeasure on his handsome face. The atmosphere froze for a while, and the man's voice broke the deadlock. Okay. After speaking, Lu Yunzhou got up and left the ward. Upon hearing the sound of the door closing, Shani Huan's stiff back softened. She raised her hand and placed it in front of her, but it was still pitch black and she couldn't see her fingers. However, there was a loud bang in her mind. My body trembled gently, pulling over the blanket to cover my head. Finally, tears were uncontrollable and overflowed from the corner of my eyes. The suppressed crying came from the blanket. After such a long time, she finally confirmed that it was a fact that her eyes couldn't see. When Lu Yunzhou and the others were here just now, she had been holding back and pretending to be okay, just not wanting to get involved with Lu Yunzhou again. This incident also made her realize how dangerous the identity of the man she unintentionally saved that night was. This time it may just be an injury, next time it may be fatal. 
She also has a grandmother, and she can't afford to gamble. If she had some ups and downs, her grandmother would be left unattended in the hospital alone. Outside the door, Lu Yunzhou's pitch black eyes peered through the window and his gaze fell on the hospital bed. At this moment, the petite figure was hiding under the blanket, causing it to twitch along with her crying. For some reason, this scene was like a big hand grabbing his heart and tearing it apart, causing a slight pain in his heart. Song Zhao looked at the medical room, then at Lu Yunzhou, and also felt a little sorry for the crying girl in the ward. Jui. Arrange for a doctor to perform a detailed examination of her eyes, contact Xie Liao, and ask him to return to China. Make sure to find a way to cure her eyes, and send someone to guard her safety in the hospital, don't let her know. Song Zhao. Yes, I'll arrange it now. Ninth Lord, please go back to the ward to rest. The doctor said that the wound on your body has cracked again. If you don't rest well, I'm afraid it will. Before he could finish speaking, Lu Yunzhou raised his hand to stop him, covered his abdomen with one hand, and turned around to leave. One week later, Miss Shen, we didn't expect the old lady's physical function to suddenly decline so quickly. I've told you before that once we use special drugs, if the old lady can't hold on, we won't be able to cure her anymore. Unfortunately, the old lady's body still hasn't been able to survive. The doctor's words undoubtedly added insult to injury for Shen Huan. She insisted on not having to help pay for medical expenses because she didn't want to get involved with Lu Yunzhou anymore, so her own money has been spent on treating her eyes during this period. She had never seen her parents since she was young, and from memory onwards, she only had her grandmother by her side. Over the years, the two of them relied on each other. Two years ago, my grandmother fell and her body deteriorated day by day. Last year on Chinese New Year's Eve, she suddenly fell to the ground and couldn't get up. She was sent to the hospital for examination and was diagnosed with a mid to late stage brain tumor. Because my grandmother is old, the risk of surgery is too high, and the success rate is too low, she chose conservative treatment. My grandmother has been living in the hospital for over a year now. A while ago, the doctor suggested using special drugs to alleviate pain and slow down the growth rate of brain tumors based on my grandmother's physical condition. At that time, the doctor told her about the possible accidents that may occur after taking the medication. She had always hoped that the probability of accidents would not occur, but she did not expect that accidents would still occur. Doctor, please. Please save my grandmother. I can't do without her, please. Chapter 3 He is Lord Lu Jui. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Seeing her about to kneel, the doctor quickly helped her up and said, Miss Shen, don't be like this. We can understand your feelings, but our hospital has indeed done our best. However, the old lady's condition is not completely hopeless. Doctor, what do you mean by that? Perhaps one person can save the old lady. Before the doctor could finish speaking, Shen Yihuan hurriedly asked, as if the heart, which had already lost its life, had once again gained hope for life. Who? Where is he? This person's name is Xia Liao, and he has achieved great success in medical skills. He can be said to be a respected figure in our medical community. I'm not afraid of you laughing when I say it out loud. Even at my age, I see him as a role model for learning. If he takes action, there may still be hope for treatment for your grandmother's illness, where is he? How can I contact him? I don't know. The doctor shook his head, but I heard that his mother and Madame Lu, the mother of the richest man in Kyoto, are cousins. As is well known, Xia Shen, a medical doctor, is not just interested in treating illnesses and saving lives. He is only interested in various difficult and complicated diseases. So even if you know where he is, you probably won't be able to invite him unless. Unless for what? If you have anything to say, feel free to speak up. Looking at the anxious girl in front of her, the doctor's gaze fell on her unfocused eyes, and sympathy flashed through them. After hesitating for a few seconds, he said, 
unless you can connect with Lu Jui and ask him to help, the chances of successfully hiring Dr. Xia will be much higher. Outside Phone Lin Mansion, Mrs. Destination has arrived, and the taxi cannot enter. The parking spot I am currently in is on the left side of the entrance of Phone Lin Mansion. After you get off the car, you can walk right for about 50 meters to reach the entrance of the mansion. As the taxi driver spoke, he opened the car door for Shini Huan. Seeing her holding a blind cane and her eyes wandering, he reached out and helped her out of the car. Shini Huan leaned slightly and said, Thank you. Upon hearing the sound of the car moving away, Shen Yihuan turned to face the direction of the mansion. The hand holding the blind cane unconsciously tightened. Silently murmuring in my heart. Shen Yihuan, you can do it. For the sake of grandma, you must persist. As expected, she was stopped by the security guard before approaching the gate of the mansion. Stop, who are you looking for? I, I'm looking for Mr. Lu Jui. Could you please help me report this? As soon as the guard heard this, his eyebrows furrowed, and his gaze on Shen Yihuan became more scrutinizing as he scrutinized her. Mr. Lu Jui hasn't come back today. If you know him, you can give him a call first. Shen Yihuan's heart tightened. Before coming, she knew from the doctor that even if she came, she might not be able to enter the Feng Lin mansion. But she had no choice but to see Lu Yunzhou, she had to enter the Feng Lin mansion. I, I don't have his number, could you please help me ask when he can come back? I'll wait for him here. As soon as the gatekeeper heard that she didn't have Lu Yunzhou's contact information, he saw her again holding a blind cane and staring ahead with unfocused eyes. In his heart, he immediately thought of her as a gold digger who wanted to climb the dragon and become a phoenix. After all, I came to Feng Lin Mansion pretending to be deaf and blind before, just to meet many women from Lu Yunzhou. If you really know Lu Yunzhou, how could you not have contact information? With this thought in mind, the guard's face darkened, and even when he spoke, his tone became harsh. If you come here without any contact information and run into trouble, hurry up and leave. I'll tell you, there are many women like you who want to win the favor of Lord Lu Jui, but none of them end up well. You should leave quickly. Don't wait for Lord Lu Jui to come back and be unhappy when he meets you, and you won't even be able to stay in Kyoto. No, you misunderstood. I really have something to do with him and have no other thoughts. I came to ask for his help, please. It's no use begging me, you hurry up and leave. During the conversation, the gatekeeper saw that Shen Huan was unwilling to leave, so he began to reach out and push her, trying to drive her away. Shen Huan's injuries had not yet recovered, and coupled with her inability to see, she never expected the other party to suddenly take action. I couldn't stand steady for a moment and suddenly fell to the ground. Lu Yunzhou happened to see this scene when he returned from work. Suddenly, his eyes filled with ice and he coldly rebuked, drive faster. Song Zhao sat in the driver's seat and drove, taking a step ahead of Lu Yunzhou to see the situation outside the gate. As Lu Yunzhou's words fell, the temperature inside the car dropped a few degrees, and he instinctively held his breath. Afraid of being implicated by the security guard, try to minimize your sense of presence. The car had just arrived outside the front door and had not yet come to a steady stop when the rear door opened. He hasn't realized yet, and there are no more people in the back seat. Watching the man walking towards Shen Huan with great strides, Song Zhao said, dot. When Shen Huan fell to the ground, she not only injured herself, but also scraped her palm on the ground. The pain filled the eyes with physiological tears. Just as she was trying to get up, someone grabbed her arm and helped her up. Did you get hurt anywhere? The man's magnetic and warm voice fell into his ears, and Shen Huan was taken aback. It's that man, how could he be here? Wait, he seems to have said his name is Lu Yunzhou, his surname is Lu, and Lord Lu Jui's surname is also Lu. Is there any possibility, are you? Are you Mr. Lu Jui? Lu Yunzhou nodded slightly, thinking that she couldn't see, and let out a sigh. Are you here specifically to find me? 
Yes, I have something to talk to you about. Could you please help me out? I. Don't worry, you're injured. Go and treat your injury first before we talk. As he spoke, Lu Yunzhou bent down, picked up the person horizontally, and walked inside. Before entering, his cold and sharp eyes scanned the security personnel at the gate and glanced at Song Zhao again. Song Zhao paused as he tried to keep up, and suddenly understood the meaning of that gaze. It takes five or six minutes to walk from the entrance to the main hall of Feng Lin Mansion. Shenihuan was held by Lu Yunzhou, and her breath was filled with the cool scent of a man's pine wood fragrance. She moved very uncomfortable. You. You let me down, I can leave by myself. Your current situation requires at least fifteen minutes to walk from here to inside. Are you sure? Shani Huan said, dot. Lu Yunzhou saw her dispel the idea of leaving, and a subtle curve curved his lips. Worried about scaring the girl in her arms, she instinctively softened her voice and said in a warm voice. Be good, you still have injuries on your body, don't move around. Listening to the man coaxing her like a child, Shani Huan's slightly sickly little face was tinged with crimson. Lu Yunzhou lowered his gaze and glanced at her, first silently smiling, and then frowning. A few days no see, she seems to have lost weight again, much lighter than the previous day when she was held. Holding someone light and floating, even though they are adults, they are like children. Body delicate and soft, heavy and light. It makes people worry that one force will damage her. He instinctively relaxed his arms around Shenihuan's back and at the bend of his legs, and even slowed down his pace a lot. Chapter 4 Calms Her Sorrow You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Shenihuan didn't know how far it was, all he knew was that Lu Yunzhou had been holding her for a while. Her body touched a touch of softness. At first, she thought it was a sofa, but it wasn't until Lu Yunzhou grabbed her foot and tried to take off her shoes that she realized she was lying on the bed. She sat up like a frightened rabbit, ready to go down. But before she could step on the ground, she was held down by a pair of big hands on her shoulders. The familiar male voice enters the ear and says, Don't move around. Mr. Lu, I'm fine. I'm here. Lie down first, I have already sent someone to call a doctor. The doctor will arrive in a moment, and other matters will wait for the doctor to handle your injuries. At the tip of his tongue, Lu Yunzhou swallowed back these words. She doesn't know much about Lu Yunzhou, but she has heard of Lu Jui to some extent before. It is rumored that Mr. Lu Jui is naturally cold and has a bad temper. She was afraid that being too anxious would make him unhappy, so Lu Yunzhou would refuse to help her. If only I had known earlier that Lu Yunzhou was Lu Jui. She wouldn't have refused Lu Yunzhou's request to repay her and compensate her before. If I hadn't refused that day, I wouldn't have been so careful asking him for help now. Thinking about it, Shen Huan's heart was filled with worries and anxieties, and his nose felt inexplicably sour. Her unfocused eyes were instantly filled with steam, and she quickly lowered her head. Lu Yunzhou witnessed all her reactions, and when he saw the tears in Shen Huan's eyes, he inexplicably felt a hint of panic and helplessness in his heart. What's wrong? Is the injury on your body too painful? Wait, I'll have someone go see if the doctor has arrived. After Lu Yunzhou finished speaking, she was about to shake her head when she heard footsteps coming from outside the door. The footsteps were a bit messy, indicating how anxious the visitor was. The doctor examined Shen Huan and treated the injury on her hand, instructing her not to touch the water before leaving. There was only Lu Yunzhou and her left in the room, and Shen Huan couldn't help but explain her purpose. Mr. Lu, please help save my grandmother. As long as you agree to help, I will agree to any request. Lu Yunzhou's pitch black eyes fell on Shen Huan's body. Seeing her low voice, her heart felt like a lump of cotton, feeling uncomfortable. Countless despicable thoughts popped up in his mind, but he denied them before they even took shape. I cursed myself for being despicable, lost my mind for a moment, 
and didn't reply to her. After Shenihuan finished speaking and saw that he didn't speak, his heart became even more anxious. Ignoring the injuries on his body, he lifted the blanket and got out of bed, kneeling directly to the ground. Mr. Lu, please, please help me. I really can't live without my grandmother, please. With a cold expression, Lu Yunjo quickly pulled the person up and rebuked him coldly, What are you doing? Shani Huan's fingertips, pinching her sleeves, turned white due to excessive force, and tears uncontrollably welled up in her eyes. The originally pale face was stained with tears, giving it a slightly more dilapidated look. It makes people feel heartbroken and pitiful. I didn't say, I won't help, so please don't worry about this matter and leave it to me to handle. You can recover well. As soon as these words were spoken, Shen Huan burst into tears of joy, and finally a smile appeared on her face. Thank you, thank you. Lu Yunzhou looked at the smile on Shen Huan's face and unconsciously raised the corners of his mouth. This is still the first time he has seen her smile. The situation when they first met was not very good, which may have left a bad impression on her. So even when she helped him bandage his wound later that night, her face still had a worried expression. When we met for the second time, she was covered in scars and was on the brink of death when he held her in his arms. After waking up in the hospital, he was eager to distance himself from her, so he never saw her smile. Shani Huan is good. Looking, but there seems to be a faint sadness between her eyebrows, making it difficult to see vitality in her. It was the smile she had just casually shown that gave Lu Yunzhou the thought of calming all her worries. He likes to watch her smile and wants her face to only have a smile. At this moment, neither of the two expected that her unintentional smile would linger in Lu Yunzhou's mind for a lifetime. Today, more than n years later, Lu Yunzhou has gray temples and a girl on her back who looks similar to Shen Huan. She is walking slowly in the Fonglin mansion. When the girl on her back asks, Grandfather, Yuan Yuan has so many brothers and sisters. Why do you like Yuan Yuan the most? Upon hearing this, Lu Yunzhou's wrinkled face showed a kind smile, and a strong sense of love appeared in his eyes. A face that made his heart beat uncontrollably flashed through his mind. It was a long time before he answered. Because Yuan Yuan smiles like your great grandmother. When my great grandfather saw Yuan Yuan smile, he felt like he saw your great grandmother, as if she was still by our side. Only in this way can my great grandfather have hoped to continue living. Returning to the present moment, don't rush to thank me yet, I have a premise for helping you. Lu Yunzhou's words brought Shen Huan's heart, which had just let go, back to her throat. What premise? As long as you are willing to help me, I will do my best to make any requests you make. As long as you can save my grandmother, I will definitely repay you as a cow in the future. Lu Yunzhou glanced at her eyes and his gaze fell on her without restraint. A heart-wrenching expression emerged in his eyes. Seems to possess, yet seems not. You don't have to be a cow or a horse. First, take care of your injuries before you can repay me. If you want to repay me, then listen to my arrangements. From today on, you will live here. When you recover from your injuries, you can think of how to repay me. Shani Huan's lips moved and she wanted to say something more. Before she could speak, Lu Yunzhou's phone rang. Lu Yunzhou pulled her to sit on the bed, gesturing for her to lie down and rest, before leaving the bedroom with his phone in hand. The room quieted down, and Shani Huan's tense body gradually relaxed. From the moment she knew that Lu Yunzhou was Lu Jui, she knew she could never draw a clear line with him again. Even though she knew that Lu Yunzhou was very dangerous and getting involved with him was likely to cost her life, she had no other choice. If it were to happen again, she would still come here. Because she couldn't watch her grandmother leave her. Since her eye injury, her hearing has become much more sensitive. Upon hearing footsteps coming from outside the door, she quickly regained her senses and cautiously looked towards the door based on her intuition. There was a knock on the door, and then it was pushed open. The voices of two women echoed in the room. 
One of them said, you go down first, I'll wait for her to finish her food before going down. Okay, Sister Wei. The sound of closing the door rang out, and the room returned to silence. Although Shen Huan couldn't see it, she could sense that the other person was looking at her. She guessed that the other party had something to say to her when they left their companions alone, so she sat quietly, waiting for the other party to speak first. After a long time, a disdainful cold snort broke the silence. She frowned slightly, pursed her lips and remained silent, adhering to the rule of not causing trouble in someone else's territory. But just because she doesn't cause trouble doesn't mean that things won't provoke her. Chapter 5 What Can You Give? You are listening at NovelFull.audio The sound of footsteps stopped by the bed, and the woman's voice reached her ears. I thought she was some kind of talented woman, but I didn't expect her face to have a bit of beauty. I have seen many beautiful vases, but it is the first time I have seen a broken vase. No wonder Jiu Yi asked you to stay. Even though you are blind, this face still seduces people. But don't think that Jiu Yi wants you to stay because he likes you. He just feels fresh. As you are blind, I advise you to leave voluntarily if you are more sensible and not let me take action Shen Yi Huan had countless speculations about this person's identity in her heart. She eventually denied them all one by one. Who are you? Why do you want me to leave? This is Lord Lu's territory. If you want me to leave, it should be him who came to tell me. It shouldn't be your turn yet. This statement completely angered the other party. The woman's eyes fell on her like shattered blades, and she said, Humph, you unknowingly take yourself seriously. You don't deserve to know my identity. Here, even Ninth Lord has to give me some face, so what I mean naturally is that it can represent Ninth Lord. Who do you think you are? With such great face, even this small matter needs to be personally told by Ninth Master. Perhaps Jiu Yi was just because you saved him once, so it was not good for him to personally drive you away, which made you stay. I'll tell you, there are many fox spirits around Ninth Lord. Those who can be personally driven out by Ninth Lord are all carried and thrown out of the mansion. Here, I handle all the people and things that Jui is not good at personally handling. Do you think you deserve to know who I am? Lu Yunzhou returned to the mansion in the middle of the night and the first thing he did upon entering was to ask, did she sleep? What did she have for dinner? The butler was taken aback and immediately realized who Lu Yunzhou was asking. He quickly replied. Miss Shen has rested. At night, I asked the kitchen to cook tonic diet and congee as you told me, but. Why? Lu Yunzhou's eyebrows sank, as if dissatisfied with the butler's hesitation. The housekeeper was startled. Miss Shen didn't move a mouthful. I thought the medicine was too strong, and asked the kitchen to cook another one without medicine. But Miss Shen still didn't eat it. She told us not to bother anymore. She said she was not hungry. I was afraid that Miss Shen would be hungry in the middle of the night. The kanji cooked in front was warm. Young master, look. Upon hearing this, Lu Yunzhou's sword eyebrows furrowed tighter and tighter. Bring a bowl up, he said before turning around and heading straight up to the second floor. Shen Huan remained mentally tense all day until she couldn't help but fall asleep in the early morning. After finally falling asleep, she vaguely sensed someone in the room and was startled. She reflexively sat up. Who? Lu Yunzhou raised his eyebrows slightly, as if he didn't expect that he had already slowed down his pace and still woke her up, let alone that her reaction would be so intense. He casually placed his coat on a nearby chair and walked over quickly. Sorry, did I scare you? As he spoke, Lu Yunzhou naturally reached out to wipe the fine beads of sweat on Shen Huan's forehead. Shen Huan stiffened all over, her fingers unconsciously gripping the blanket. Lu Yunzhou was also taken aback, realizing that his current actions were too intimate for him and Shen Huan. He slightly withdrew his body, and Shen Huan slowly shook his head. Is Jiu Yi looking for me so late for something? Watching Shen Huan cautiously inquire, 
Lu Yunzhou's black eyes narrowed slightly and he paused to explain. I just came back from a social gathering and heard from the butler that you didn't eat anything tonight, so I came up to take a look. Excuse me, Ninth Lord. I'm fine, I just don't have an appetite. After speaking, seeing that Lu Yunzhou didn't speak, she didn't know what came to her mind and explained again. Maybe my injuries haven't healed yet, so I don't have much appetite. Ninth Lord, don't worry about me. Lu Yunzhou's sharp eyes looked at her, and his gaze fell on her nervous fingers as she spoke, grabbing the blanket with excessive force. I furrowed my brows slightly and spoke to her in a soft voice as much as possible. If you don't have an appetite, you should eat a little more. What I make for you is tonic diet, which is good for your wound recovery. At this time, a knock on the door interrupted the conversation between them. It was the housekeeper who sent Kanji. Lu Yunzhou took the tray and placed it on the bedside table, gesturing for the butler to go down. Pulling up his sleeves, he took a pillow beside Shen Yihuan and put it behind her to make her feel more comfortable. Then he took a bowl of kanji from the tray and stirred it gently with a spoon. When he realized that the temperature was suitable for the entrance, he scooped up a spoon and handed it to Shen Yihuan's mouth. Open your mouth. Shen Yihuan was taken aback somewhat frightened. The conditioned reflex retreated a bit, joke, how dare she let Lu Yunzhou feed her. He is Lord Lu Jui, and her identity is vastly different from his. How dare she trouble him again on such a small matter, as she has already owed him a great debt of kindness to seek his approval and help save her grandmother's life. Thank you. Thank you, Ninth Master. I'm really not hungry, you don't need to, if you don't eat, when will your injuries heal? If your body doesn't recover, how can you repay me? Lu Yunzhou successfully blocked Shen Yihuan's unspoken words with just one sentence. She couldn't help but recall the woman who was talking to her in the room today. A woman's words flashed through her mind, saying that Lu Yunzhou only kept her because he was fresh for a while. He just said how can she repay him if her body doesn't recover? Does his meaning mean, Jui? Can you tell me now how you want me to repay you? Lu Yunzhou paused holding the spoon and his gaze returned to Shen Yihuan's face. He threw the spoon back into the bowl, neither light nor heavy, and coincidentally collided with the bowl to make a sound. Shen Yi was pleasantly surprised and pretended to remain calm to suppress the trembling of her body caused by conditioned reflexes. Then she heard the bowl being put down, and then the voice of Lu Yunzhou rang out in the room. He asked, how do you want to repay me? I believe you already knew my identity before you came here. I'm not short of money or power. What do you think I'm short of? The man's voice, neither light nor heavy, slowly reached her ears without deliberate suppression, but still made her feel an endless sense of oppression. My heart has cooled halfway. Yeah. He is not short of money or power, and even if he is short, she cannot afford either of these. Just as she was speechless, Lu Yunzhou asked again, or what can you give me that I can't get from anywhere else? I. Shen Yihuan was speechless. She bit her lower lip and lowered her head in silence. After a long time, when she looked up again, it seemed like she had made some decision in her heart. She replied softly, I know now. Don't worry. I will definitely eat on time and take care of my body as soon as possible. I won't let you wait too long. Lu Yunzhou was taken aback for a moment. He felt that Shen Yihuan's words seemed to have some other meaning. Looking at Shen Yihuan's palm-sized face with a strange blush, he immediately understood that the girl had misunderstood him. Subconsciously wanting to explain, I didn't know what came to my mind, but I swallowed it back to my mouth. Well, let's start eating well from today, preferably with some meat. I don't like people who are too thin, she blurted out Shen Yihuan is still an inexperienced girl, and upon hearing this, her face turned red uncontrollably. Chapter 6 Petting and Drowning You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Seeing her embarrassed, Lu Yunzhou did not continue this topic. Re-serve kanji to feed her, open your mouth. I'll do it myself, don't bother. 
Your hand is not convenient. Lu Yunzhou avoids her hand and directly hands kanji to her mouth. Shani Huan has to suppress her uneasiness and open her mouth. Seeing her start eating, Lu Yunzhou's mouth curved slightly. The room calmed down. In order to end the awkward atmosphere early, Shani Huan didn't chew the kanji carefully. She swallowed it after two times of swallowing. Because of that woman's words, her emotions suddenly rose and affected her appetite, so she didn't take a bite during dinner. Maybe it is because she has opened her eyes and accepted the fact, or maybe she is really hungry. The rice porridge, which was originally tasteless, feels particularly fragrant in her mouth, which increases her appetite. The girls that Lu Yunzhou has encountered are all trying to maintain their image as socialites and ladies, chewing their food carefully and slowly. Especially the women I usually come into contact with are either the ones my grandfather brought over to marry the Lu family, or the ones my partners brought over to please him as gifts. Those women would be coy in front of him, and everyone would try their best to curry favor with him, giving people a sense of pretense. Watching too much can't help but make you feel a little nauseous. On the contrary, girls like Shani Huan who are not bound by small details look more pleasing to the eye. Watching Shani Huan wolf down his food, Lu Yunzhou's eyes were tinged with a look of indulgence. Eat slowly, no one is competing with you. In the future, you must not skip meals and eat every meal on time. Shani Huan's face lit up when he was mentioned. I don't know if it's her illusion, but she always felt that when Lu Yunzhou spoke earlier, his tone was very gentle and indulgent. It's not like the attitude one should have towards someone who has only known her for a few days and has not met her more than five times in total. It's like a caring reminder between couples. This idea was immediately rejected by her own. Shani Huan, you can't see any more and your brain is not working well, right? How could Lu Yunzhou possibly have that kind of thought for you? Even if he did, it would definitely be a creditor's liking for pets. Today, the woman reminded her inside and outside of her words that she was just a plaything left behind by Lu Yunzhou because she felt fresh for a while. She shouldn't have been daydreaming. Besides, this person is not something I can imagine. She nodded lightly and said, hmm. She had just finished nodding when a dry and gentle touch suddenly came from the corner of her mouth. Shani Huan was stunned and stiffened uncontrollably. The man smiled, wiped the kanji on her mouth as if nothing had happened, and jokingly said. How old is it? There are still plenty of places to eat, and children are not as worried as you are. If you really want to eat on your own, you can't feed it into your nose seemingly blaming, the tone lacks any hint of accusation. Shani Huan instinctively wiped the corners of her mouth with her hand. Her fair little face was like a duck that had just boiled water, and her cheeks were flushed. I, I'm full, thank you. Lu Yunzhou glanced at the two or three kanji left in the bowl and silently put the bowl back into the tray. It's also good to avoid overeating in the middle of the night and causing stomach damage. Shani Huan was about to say that he should return to his room early to rest, but before he could say anything, his body suddenly took off. Facing the man who hugged her frequently, although Shani Huan couldn't see the man's expression at the moment, she couldn't help feeling uncomfortable. She relied on her grandmother since childhood and had no opposite sex around her. Even though there were male classmates who attended classes together during their previous studies, there was no boy like Lu Yunzhou who was so close to her. She instinctively wrapped her hands around the man's neck. Where are you taking me? Quickly let me down. If you exert such force, the wound on your body will crack. She remembers that he was seriously injured that night, covered in blood. There are injuries to the back and chest. A statement that clearly stated the facts had already changed its flavor in Lu Yunzhou's ears. He naturally thought that Shani Huan was worried about him. He curved his lips and said, Don't move around. I'll take you to brush your teeth. It's time for you to go to bed. Staying up late is not conducive to your recovery from injuries. Some indescribable images flashed through Shani Huan's mind, and she gently bit her lower lip and closed her mouth. 
Does this man seem to be constantly hoping for her physical recovery because he wants to satisfy his little selfish desires earlier? How long will he maintain this freshness towards her? If he gets what he wants, will he abandon her? If grandma's illness hasn't been cured yet, will he still help her then? Countless hypotheses formed in her mind, and Shani Huan's face turned a bit pale. The hand around the man's neck tightened. No, I must save my grandmother. I must not let myself lose my value until her illness is cured. Thinking this way, Shen Yihuan silently made a decision in her heart. Lu Yunzhou put her down and helped her stand steady. Just as he was about to release his hand and squeeze toothpaste for Shen Yihuan, before his hand could withdraw from her body, Shen Yihuan grabbed her arm. The girl standing in front of him pulled at him with a blush on her face and whispered. I can't see it, and I can't touch the water with my hands. Could you please help me squeeze out the toothpaste before receiving a glass of water? Lu Yunzhou raised his eyebrows slightly and looked at Shen Yihuan with some surprise. She was standing between the wash basin and him, and at this moment he was reaching out with one hand to pick up the toothpaste on the wash basin, while the other hand was being pulled by Shen Yihuan. Looking in the mirror, it was as if he was holding Shen Yihuan in his arms and bending down to kiss her. Although he didn't know why the girl who was trying to keep a distance from him any time and anywhere the previous second suddenly changed for some reason. But he admitted that when he heard Shen Yihuan's delicate and soft tone, it was as if she was coquettishly talking to him, and he was pleased. Lu Yunzhou's gaze fell on the girl's flushed face, her Adam's apple unconsciously sliding up and down. He lowered his gaze at her and after a while, he finally let out a sigh. For a long time afterwards, Lu Yunzhou discovered that after that night, Shen Yihuan had become particularly well, clingy. Every time he comes home from work, he can always see the girl sitting quietly in the living room. At first, he would ask her why she wasn't resting in the room and what she was doing in the living room. When Shen Yihuan's answer was that she was waiting for him to finish work, and it was like this every day, Lu Yunzhou felt that this feeling was quite good. Not only is it good, but it also makes him look forward to the time when he comes home from work every day. During this period, Shen Yihuan's grandmother underwent surgery and her postoperative condition was relatively good. Because the tumor is located in the head, it compresses the brain nerves, and the elderly are getting older, so it is not possible to completely remove the foundation of the tumor. However, although the pathogen was not completely removed, it has effectively alleviated the speed of tumor expansion. In a short period of time, as long as you rest well, there is no problem living for a few more years without accidents. Shen Yihuan knew from the beginning that as her grandmother grew older, the possibility of treating a broken root was extremely small. I never gave up just because I wanted to do my best and let my grandmother accompany her for a few more years. So this result was expected by Shen Yihuan. Chapter 7 The Little Fox in Sheepskin You are listening at NovelFull.audio After her grandmother's surgery, Shen Yihuan's smile gradually increased and her injuries improved. Lu Yunzhou also felt relieved. He naturally regarded Shen Yihuan's behavior of waiting for him to finish work in the living room every day as her dependence on him. Faced with Shen Yihuan's dependence, Lu Yunzhou's mood visibly improved. He found himself accustomed to seeing Shen Yihuan sitting in the living room waiting for him every day after work. Until that day, when Lu Yunzhou returned home from work, he did not see Shen Yihuan's figure, and he still felt a bit uncomfortable for a while. After a pause in his footsteps, he asked, Where is she? During this period, Lu Yunzhou's attitude towards Shen Yihuan is well dot known within the Fonglin mansion. As soon as I heard this, I knew he was asking Shen Yihuan. The servant beside respectfully replied. Miss Shen left at noon and said she was going to the hospital to see her grandmother. She won't be back until midnight tonight. Upon hearing this, Lu Yunzhou frowned slightly and said, Does she have anything you want you to bring to me? The servant shook his head and said, No. Who took her to the hospital? Is there anyone following her? Yes, Ah uh, Biao sent Miss Shen to the hospital. Got it, go ahead and get busy first. 
After the servant left, Lu Yunzhou's face darkened. I went to the hospital at noon and haven't spoken to him or left a message for him until now. Unfortunately, he thought her previous performance was a reliance on him. It seems that her previous actions were probably because she was worried that he wouldn't help her find someone to treat her grandmother, so she threw rainbow candy at him. That acting was so good that even he was deceived. Haha <laughs> what a little fox dressed in sheepskin. In the hospital, Gigi, can you honestly tell grandma that your eye injury is related to the doctor who performed the surgery on me? Upon hearing her grandmother's inquiry, Shani Huan was taken aback and said, Grandma, why do you think so? My eye injury was accidental and has nothing to do with Dr. Xie. Grandmother is getting old, but these eyes are still good. If it weren't for him causing you to hurt your eyes, how could he possibly treat me? I've heard about it recently. Dr. Xie has a long history, and saving lives depends on his mood. You have no money and no power. If he didn't feel guilty to you, how could you easily persuade him? Gigi, my grandmother is getting old and doesn't have much time to work even if she tries hard. My grandmother doesn't want you to be hurt or wronged because I run into walls everywhere. I just hope you can be okay, so even if my grandmother goes underground, she can rest assured, grandmother, Shani Huan's nose pointed sour as she quickly lowered her head and leaned against her arm with her head tilted. Don't talk nonsense. You will definitely live a long life and be fine. You said you wanted to watch me fall in love and get married, but you can't break your promise. The old man's wrinkled face showed a hint of heartache, gently caressing Shani Huan's head with his hand. Without answering her words, she let out a sigh in her heart and slowly said. If you don't want to tell me, I won't ask. You just have to promise me to take good care of yourself. Your eyes are injured now, so don't keep running to the hospital in the future. Hurry up and cure your eyes as soon as possible. You are still young, but don't let the root cause fall on you, so as not to let yourself suffer as you age in the future, well, I know now. Grandma doesn't have to worry about me. The doctor has already said that my eyes are just temporarily blind. After a while, the blood stasis in my brain will dissipate and you can see it. MMM, you need to be careful when cycling in the future, don't let such things happen again. I fell on my head and hurt my eyes this time. I'm not sure where I'll get hurt next time, but I'll have to be more careful in the future listening to the old man's advice, Shani Huan just obediently responded. Before her injuries healed, she never dared to come to the hospital to see her grandmother, nor did she tell her grandmother about her blindness. For her grandmother's inquiry, she only said that she had something to do and skipped it, without daring to mention what had happened to her recently. I'm worried that my grandmother will worry for her, which will affect her physical recovery. Now that my grandmother's surgery has been successful and she has almost recovered, she dares to visit the hospital. As soon as she arrived at the hospital today, her grandmother noticed something was wrong with her. She can't hide even if she wants to. So I casually made an excuse, saying that I accidentally fell on my head while riding a bike, and there was blood stasis in my brain that compressed the nerves, which led to temporary blindness in my eyes. There was no mention of the existence of Lu Yunzhou or the relationship between him and her. The relationship between her and Lu Yunzhou, although not explicitly stated, she also knows that the fact is indeed as that woman said. For Lu Yunzhou, she is just a pet. To put it bluntly, it is the woman of Lu Yunzhou. Although there has not been any substantial relationship between the two yet. But she knew that Lu Yunzhou had never touched her, just because her body had not fully recovered yet. So she doesn't want her grandmother to know about the existence of Lu Yunzhou. One is that she doesn't want her grandmother to worry about her, and the other is that she doesn't want her grandmother to know that she owes Lu Yunzhou kindness because she saved her. She doesn't want her grandmother to feel guilty, nor does she want her grandmother to blame herself for it. I don't want anyone else to know that she used to be Lu Yunzhou's lover after repaying his kindness in the future. Besides, this is still her closest person, and she doesn't want her grandmother to know about her unbearable situation. Alright, I'm fine here. You go back and rest. 
You're still a sick patient and staying here won't be able to take care of me. The caregiver you hired is quite good, and I've been taken care of very well. Don't worry about me. Think about yourself more when you have time. Don't forget about your life. Only when you get married and your grandson and son dot in dot law treat you well, can I feel at ease. Grandma, the girl pulled the old man to act coquettishly, with a long and soft ending that made people feel like they had eaten marshmallows and their hearts became sweet. Are you disgusted with me? You always urge me to make a boyfriend quickly. Yes, I despise you now. I'm old and enjoy being clean. You've been chattering in my ear all day, causing a lot of trouble. Can't you wait for you to get married quickly? The old man spoke like this, but in reality, there was no hint of disgust on his face. The thick smile at the corner of the eye is an indescribable joy for the girl in front of me. Shani Huan knew that her grandmother was speaking sarcastically and cooperated by pouting. Grandma can't abandon me, even if you despise me, I'll have to stick to you for the rest of my life. Upon hearing this, the smile on Grandma's face gradually disappeared. Looking at Shani Huan's unfocused eyes, the old man sighed in his heart. Perhaps sensing the old man's low mood, Shani Huan gently pulled his hand and said, Grandma, even if I get married in the future, I will always be with you. I will find a grandson and son dot in dot law who will come to your door, so that you can see me every day and I can accompany you for a lifetime. In the ward, the elderly and grandchildren occasionally whispered something. Chapter 8 You're not trying to default, are you? You are listening at novel full dot audio. Outside the hospital, a Porsche parked in a parking space downstairs. The car was shrouded in smoke, and many cigarette butts were lost in the ashtray under the central control. The man sitting in the driver's seat furrowed his brows tightly, and the tie on his neck was a bit messy from being pulled. The cigarette held between the man's fingertips was about to burn out, indicating that he had been sitting in the car for a long time. The ringing of the phone broke the silence in the car. The cigarette was pressed into the ashtray and extinguished and the caller ID on the phone screen was swiped open to answer. The man's cold voice uttered a word, speak. Jui, I have asked the hospital doctors to excuse me from discussing the old lady's condition and call Miss Shen out of the ward. Miss Shen should be in the doctor's office now. Hmm. I need to go. Do do, on the other end of the phone, Song Zhao was dropped before he could finish speaking. Listening to the busy sound on his phone, he couldn't help but give a sharp twitch at the corner of his mouth. I never knew before that Mr. Lu Jui's emotions would be so volatile. It seems that since the addition of that person at home, someone's emotions have changed from time to time. It's like a long-delayed uncle suddenly visiting, which is emotionally unstable and unpredictable. Lu Yunzhou hung up the phone and opened the car door to get off, heading straight to the doctor's office in the inpatient department. Shani Huan waited alone in the office for a while, but when she saw that the doctor who had just mentioned discussing his grandmother's condition had not returned yet, she frowned slightly. Just as he was about to get up and leave, the sound of an open door came from behind. Her furrowed eyebrows relaxed. Doctor, has my grandmother's condition changed again? What do I need to do? She finished speaking and didn't see a reply from the other party for a long time. She silently clenched the blind cane in her hand and said, Dr. Su. Why didn't you tell me when you came to the hospital? A familiar voice sounded, and Shen Huan breathed a sigh of relief in his heart. His guard on the face relaxed slightly. Jiu Ye's affairs are busy, so I don't have to bother you with this small matter. I haven't seen my grandmother for a long time, and I'm worried that she will remember. I just came to see her and will go back tomorrow morning. Upon hearing this, Lu Yunzhou's eyebrows furrowed, and Shani Huan's attitude of wanting to keep a distance from him made him inexplicably uncomfortable. A few days ago, I wished I could stick to him all the time, but now I'm in a hurry to draw a line with him. If he still can't see through her previous behavior, which was just pretending to be obedient, then his food for these years will be in vain. 
Looking at Shen Huan's polite and distant expression, Lu Yunzhou's eyes sank. There are caregivers in the hospital, and staying here won't help much. Let's go. I'll take you back. The doctor said there are some information about my grandmother's condition that needs to be told to me. Can we wait first? When I came up, I saw all the doctors heading towards the operating room. It seemed like someone had a car accident, and they rushed over to save someone. Go back first, I'll let someone know the situation before I tell you. Upon hearing this, Shani Huan's lips moved, but after all, she didn't say anything more. She let out a sigh and walked towards the door based on her intuition. Lu Yunzhou pressed his tongue against his back teeth twice, knowing that Shen Huan was now determined to keep a distance from him. He resisted the urge to pick her up, pulled off his tie from his neck, and put it into Shen Huan's hand. He then pulled the other end and pulled her out. Shen Huan was taken aback and stood still. Lu Yunzhou turned to look at her and said coldly, Let's walk faster this way. After speaking, without waiting for her to say anything, continue walking forward. Shen Huan frowned slightly, she didn't know what was wrong with Lu Yunzhou today. Although she couldn't see it, she could feel that Lu Yunzhou was in a bad mood today. It's like eating a cannon fight. She silently followed behind Lu Yunzhou, thinking to herself, hoping it wasn't because of her. Neither of them spoke and walked into the elevator before going downstairs. Arriving at the side of the car, Lu Yunzhou opened the passenger door and stuffed the person into the car. Slam the car door and walk around to the driver's seat. Without saying a word, start the car and leave. Shen Huan pursed her lips, trying to minimize her presence. Lu Yunzhou glanced at her from the side and felt a little regretful when he saw her carefully and quietly staying there. Lu Yunzhou, what's wrong with you and this little girl? She just came to see her family and didn't bring you with her. In her heart, you are just her grandmother's life.saving benefactor. She just doesn't want to cause you any more trouble. What's wrong with that? Lu, who had coaxed himself, finally had a slightly better complexion. When I saw your grandmother today, did she ask you about your eye injury? Did she hate me to death? Shen Huan didn't expect him to suddenly speak, and it was still this topic. She was stunned for a few seconds before coming back to her senses. Worried that Lu Yunzhou might misunderstand, she quickly waved her hand. No, no, I didn't tell my grandmother that my eye injury was due to you. When he asked me, I told her that it was because I accidentally fell on my bike and injured my head. I had blood pressure in my brain, which forced my eye nerves to briefly go blind. Don't worry, I didn't pull you out. She thought she would be a little happier if she said that, after all, she concealed it for him. But I didn't know that her explanation was better off not saying it. Lu Yunzhou saw through her thoughts at a glance. The haze that finally dissipated has returned to my heart. Oh, dead girl, I've been out all day, sitting with her in front of her grandmother without even mentioning him. You really have a clear distinction, humph. Shani Huan saw that he was silent again and didn't know where she had said the wrong thing. As the atmosphere became increasingly oppressive, she pulled the topic aside and said, Thank you for the caregiver matter. My grandmother said that the caregiver who came to take care of her was very kind, careful, and hardworking. She took good care of her. Lu Yunzhou let out a cold snort in his heart. I don't want to talk to her. Thinking to myself, can it be okay? The caregiver who takes care of her grandmother now is the close servant who used to take care of her grandmother. In order to reassure her, the maid had quit her job to take care of her grandson in Go Home, and he invited her back to take care of her grandmother. Unfortunately, this heartless dead girl is unaware of his good intentions. On the surface, he appeared to be dependent on him, but in reality, he kept thinking about how to keep a distance from him. Fortunately, he still believed it. He didn't answer Shen Huan's words, but instead brought up another topic, how is your health? Shen Huan was taken aback for a moment, unsure of what was on her mind, and her face quickly blushed. When I speak again, my tongue feels like it's tied in a knot, 
and I can't even speak smoothly. It's already. It's already okay. Since it's okay, then think carefully about how to repay my kindness in helping you find someone to treat your grandmother. Upon hearing this, some images flashed through Shani Huan's mind, and she couldn't help but feel a bit hesitant. Underestimating in a low voice, then I saved your life. If you help me once and I help you once, then it's even. There was only a little bit of space in the car, and even though her voice was very low when she said this, it all fell into Lu Yunzhou's ears. Lu Yunzhou sneered and said, Oh, he's not big, he's not afraid. Don't forget that you saved me once, and I said I wanted to give you a reward that you didn't want yourself. I saved your grandmother, but I didn't say not to repay her. Lu Yunzhou paused for a moment, his eyes narrowed slightly, and a dangerous signal flashed through his eyes. Shani Huan, you're not trying to default, are you? Chapter 9 Revenge Psychology You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Shani Huan suddenly remembered what the woman had said before in her mind. Those who came to Feng Lin Mansion and were personally kicked out by Lu Yunzhou were all carried out by people. If she nods now, will she be the next one to be lifted out? Thinking of this, she couldn't help but shiver all over. My face turned a little pale. No, how could I possibly cheat? I, I know now, don't worry, I haven't forgotten. Upon hearing this, Lu Yunzhou's mouth curved slightly. He glanced sideways at Shini Huan. The little girl has experienced few things and has not seen much. At this moment, everything she is thinking in her heart is reflected on her face. Looking at her restless expression, Lu Yunzhou's eyes were tinged with a smile and he didn't say anything more. Worried about pushing people too hard may have the opposite effect. Returning to Feng Lin Mansion, Shani Huan went straight back to his room. She took a shower and walked out of the bathroom, only to smell a hint of the aroma of the food. Noticing someone in the room, a conversation with Lu Yunzhou flashed through my mind on the way back. Her hand hanging on her side unconsciously pinched the nightgown on her side. It seemed like a decision had been made in my heart, so I lifted my foot and continued walking towards the direction of the bed. Walking to the bedside, she groped her way onto the bed and sat down against the headboard. After struggling a few times in my heart, I said, I. I'm ready, come on. From the moment she came out of the bathroom, every move she made was watched by Lu Yunzhou. He saw the expression on her face as she struggled inwardly, as well as the nervousness on her face due to fear. When she finally said these words, her face showed a deathly expression. In just two or three minutes, the expression on her face was colorful and varied. It looks extremely cute, making people want to destroy it severely. I have to admit, at the moment I heard her words, it really moved him. Make him think of not being a good person, want to make her cry hard, and beg him for mercy in a low voice. But it was only for a moment that he softened his heart when he saw the girl's face turn pale due to fear and nervousness. I can't bear to part with it. During the two or three months they spent together, he didn't know when he began to have this longing for Shini Huan. I want to protect her, take care of her, and see her face full of smiles. Seeing her smile, he will also be happy. He couldn't explain what this strange feeling was, but he knew he wasn't averse to it. After Shini Huan finished speaking, there was no response for a long time, and there was no movement in the room, making her heart even more nervous. At that moment, she heard footsteps approaching her, her eyelashes trembling, forcing herself not to back down. The man's sharp breath wafted into his nose, and the scent of pine wood grew closer and closer. If the eyes cannot see, the senses are magnified countless times. She nervously swallowed her saliva, and just as she was at a loss, a low laugh came into her ears. She was held in her arms by a pair of strong and powerful hands. Don't worry, eat first to save you energy later. The man's words successfully made the originally nervous girl blush instantly. Lu Yunzhou lifted the person onto the sofa and sat down, skillfully taking the chopsticks and starting to feed her. During this period, she was worried that it would make Lu Yunzhou unhappy. 
She deliberately showed obedience in everything, so every time Lu Yunzhou fed her, she also obediently accepted it. It can be said that it has become common for Lu Yunzhou to feed her, and she has also become accustomed to it. But for some reason, she felt particularly uncomfortable doing the same thing tonight. I always feel that every move by Lu Yunzhou will make her heart beat faster and her mind wander frequently. After finally finishing a meal, she felt as if she had been thrown onto the stove. As soon as she thought about what was going to happen next, she felt hot all over. Lu Yunzhou didn't eat much food and watched Shen Huan's every move throughout the journey. He saw her unease in his eyes and originally wanted to say something, but thinking of how badly she had deceived him before, he felt a vengeful mentality. So he remained silent, not knowing or comforting. Seeing Shen Huan sitting stiffly on the sofa, he calmly cleaned up the leftover food from the two of them. After tidying up, he went to the restroom to wash his hands, then bent over to the sofa and picked up the person horizontally, walking towards the restroom. At the moment when Shen Yi's body took off, she was startled and quickly hugged his neck. Jui, exclaimed in a low voice Lu Yunzhou's Adam's apple moved and his voice became a bit hoarse. He walked straight into the bathroom without stopping. When Shen Huan was held and stuffed into the bed again, she was still confused. As soon as she touched the bed, she instinctively grabbed onto the blanket, but she didn't expect Lu Yunzhou to put her under the blanket and stop moving. Lu Yunzhou pulled the blanket over her and said in a hoarse voice, Go to sleep. Shen Huan said, Dot. Is that all? You. I know what you're thinking, wait until your eyes are fine before we talk. Lu Yunzhou left the room and closed the door, his eyes instantly sinking. Ever since he knew Shen Huan's thoughts, he knew that she would have this one tonight. He's not pretending to be a gentleman if he doesn't touch her. Not touching Shen Huan, just feeling like it's not the right time yet. And he was certain that if he really did something to her tonight, Shen Huan would leave after tonight. He didn't touch her, and in Shen Huan's heart, he still owed him kindness. As long as this favor is not repaid for a day, Shen Huan will not take the initiative to leave. He still has things to deal with cleanly, and once Shen Huan leaves his protection area, he might lose his life if he doesn't pay attention. Last time, due to his negligence, Shen Huan's blindness was indirectly caused. If he doesn't protect the person well this time, let alone anything else, even he can't pass the hurdle in his heart. Moreover, he has not yet figured out whether his treatment of Shen Huan is optional or necessary for her. He needs time to deal with those disgusting dirty things and people, as well as time to see his own heart. Here, he does not allow himself to fight uncertain battles. Shen Huan is still young, and she also needs time to grow. The next day, Shen Huan woke up at noon and Lu Yunzhou had already gone to the company. During dinner, she remembered last night and blushed on her face. In the evening, Lu Yunzhou did not come back and did not see anyone until the next day. This was the first time she had seen Lu Yunzhou stay up at night since she moved into the Feng Lin mansion. Shen Huan couldn't help but feel curious and asked, Has Ninth Lord never come back? Upon hearing this, the butler looked at her and hesitated to speak. Thinking of Lu Yunzhou's attitude towards Shen Huan, he answered truthfully, Zhu Yi went on a business trip yesterday. I thought Zhu Yi had told you, so I didn't mention it. Upon hearing these words, Shen Huan frowned slightly. Immediately exclaimed, when he left yesterday, I was still resting and he didn't tell me. I guess Zhu Yi was worried about disturbing your rest, so he didn't tell you. Well, did he say when he will come back? The butler was taken aback, seemingly not expecting Shen Huan to ask like this. After all, everyone in the entire mansion knows that wherever Lu Yunzhou goes, he never greets anyone, let alone reports his whereabouts. After a pause, he replied, Ninth Lord didn't say anything, and we dare not ask more questions. Shen Huan nodded slightly and said, Hmm, I see. Uncle Wang, please go ahead and get busy. Okay, you can give me your orders if there's anything, said the butler, feeling that she was different from other socialites. 
The other daughters always looked down on them through their noses, as if they looked down upon them. But Shen Huan is different. In the more than two months since she arrived at the mansion, he has never seen Shen Huan yell at anyone, let alone look down on anyone. Even the respectful language used when talking to him. After thinking for a moment, he said again, the sun is nice outside today. If Miss feels bored, I'll let Xiao Su accompany you out to bask in the sun. Upon hearing this, Shen Huan's lifeless eyes lit up and he said, is that okay? Will this cause you trouble? Chapter 10 Meaning You are listening at NovelFull.audio The butler immediately recognized the meaning behind her words and shook his head with a smile. No, since the first day you stayed in, the young master has instructed you to go wherever you want in the entire mansion. If you have anything to do here, just instruct your servants to do it without you having to do it yourself. Half a month passed in a blink of an eye. Lu Yunzhou has not returned yet. During his absence, Shen Huan went from being a bit uncomfortable at the beginning, to gradually getting used to it, and then starting to worry about him later on. On that day, Shen Huan had just finished his meal and was about to go to the yard to digest his food when he heard a furious voice as soon as he walked out. Why are you still here? Shen Huan frowned slightly, ready to ignore the other person and return to the room to rest. As soon as she turned around, someone pulled her arm. Due to inertia, I couldn't stand firm for a moment and fell to the ground. Did I let you go? Humble, did you seduce Ninth Lord again during my absence? I didn't warn you before not to try to stay here forever. Are you deaf? The butler heard the noise in the yard and quickly came out to check. Seeing Shen Huan sitting on the ground and seeing Zhang Kaiwei staring at Shen Huan with a domineering expression, he immediately guessed something in his heart. Without careful consideration, I hurriedly stepped forward to help Shen cheer up. Before Shen Huan could touch her hand, Zhang Kaiwei pushed her away. What are you doing? Didn't you see me talking to her? The butler watched as Zhang Kaiwei made things difficult for Shen Huan. He suppressed his disgust and advised him kindly. Miss Zhang, Miss Shen is different from others. She was personally brought back by the Ninth Lord, so please think twice before taking action. If you have anything to say, you can wait for Miss Shen to sit down and speak slowly, humph, Zhang Kaiwei snorted coldly, clearly not buying it. Uncle Wang, just take care of yourself, I don't need you to worry. This is between me and her, you mind your own business upon hearing this, the butler's face darkened. Zhang Kaiwei often acts recklessly like this. She dares to do so simply because her father is someone around Mr. Lu, which is why she dares to be so arrogant in the Feng Lin mansion. There were many maids who had been harassed by her before, but Lu Yunzhou never punished her, so they dared not say anything. The butler ignored her and was about to help Shen Yi cheer up when he heard a voice coming from the door. What are you doing? As soon as Lu Yunzhou entered the gate, he saw such a scene. Shen Huan sat on the ground, and the butler was bending down to help her. Standing beside her, Zhang Kaiwei had her hands wrapped around her chest, looking domineering. Saying unpleasant words in my mouth. Cheap, human, it's okay to flirt with the Ninth Lord. I see how much Steward Wang cares about you, wouldn't you even climb up his bed? You are really restless. You won't let go of Steward Wang's old age while Ninth Lord is away. You are so short of men. Upon hearing this, Lu Yunzhou's anger surged to the heavens, forgetting even what elegance meant. He quickly stepped forward and kicked Zhang Kaiwei in the leg. Zhang Kaiwei knelt down in pain. Just as I was about to curse, I was so scared that I couldn't speak up when I looked at Lu Yunzhou with anger. Lu Yunzhou pushed away the butler and picked up Shen Huan horizontally. Call the doctor over. Lu Yunzhou did not carry Shen Huan into the room, but instead sat on a nearby bench with a person in his arms. There were other people around, and Shen Huan felt a bit uncomfortable being held by him. But as soon as she moved, she heard the man's deep voice whispering in her ear. Don't move, let me see where it hurts. As he spoke, 
Lu Yunzhou had already started to pull up her hand to check, and only breathed a sigh of relief when he saw that her palm had not been peeled, but only slightly reddened when it touched the ground. Is there anything else injured besides my hand? Shenihuan felt a bit embarrassed to be cared for by him in front of others like this. She instinctively withdrew her hand and said, I'm fine, I didn't hurt anything. Please let me down quickly. Stupid, being bullied doesn't know how to fight back. There are so many servants in the mansion, don't you know how to use them? Although it was an accusation, there was no hint of blame in the tone. Shenihuan explained gently, I heard the servant say her father is the butler on your grandfather's side before, and I don't want to cause trouble for Ninth Lord. Shenihuan just explained the reason why she didn't fight back. But Lu Yunzhou suddenly recognized other meanings from inside. Her dark eyes suddenly turned cold. She even bullied you before. Shenihuan frowned slightly, pursed her lips, pondered for a while, and briefly explained the previous incident. The night you just took me back to the mansion, she came to see me. As soon as the words fell, Lu Yunzhou's eyes swept towards the butler like shattered ice. I asked you to take care of people, is that how you take care of them? It's been so long, and you haven't mentioned a word to me. Do you not know, or do you take it seriously? Upon hearing this, the butler and other servants knelt down on the ground. They were not unaware of Zhang Tsaiwei's warning to Shen Huan before. At that time, they were not sure about Lu Yunzhou's attitude toward Shen Huan. I thought Lu Yunzhou wouldn't like a blind woman. In addition, Zhang Tsaiwei's father was from the side of Grandpa Lu Yunzhou. Seeing that Shen Huan did not report to Lu Yunzhou, they turned a blind eye and thought they knew nothing. But it is obvious that Lu Yunzhou is very angry now that he knows about it. It is obvious that Shen Huan has been taken into consideration, and today we will seek justice for her. Seeing this clearly, the butler lowered his head and said, It's our fault. We didn't take good care of Miss Shen. Please punish us. Each person's salary will be deducted for three months. If such a thing happens again, get out of here. Zhang Kaiwei was extremely jealous when she saw that Lu Yunzhou had been holding Shen Yihuan's attention from the moment she entered the door, and that Shen Yihuan had punished the servant without even giving her a glance. The look in Shen Yihuan's eyes was as if shattered with poison, full of hatred. Jui, you can't just believe her one-dot-sided words. She's lying, and I never bullied her before. I'm just trying to persuade her to leave. She can't see anything, and she doesn't deserve you anywhere. I'm just worried that your grandfather will find out and it will be detrimental to you. I don't want her to drag you down, so I took the initiative to do so. I'm all for your good, I really don't. For my good. Lu Yunzhou retorted coldly, you have been bullying my people repeatedly. This is called, for my good. In what capacity are you in charge of my affairs? What qualifications do you have to drive her away? I. Shut up, Lu Yunzhou rebuked coldly. I don't want to hear your explanation. Someone. Halfway through Lu Yunzhou's words, Song Zhao hurriedly arrived and whispered in his ear. Jui, that night. I don't know what the other person said, but the coldness in Lu Yunzhou's eyes suddenly became even stronger than before, and a murderous intent flashed deep in his eyes.